It's fantastic to see so many of you here. Thank you very much for coming. For us, it's a really, really important session um, because the words change the fabric of our society from the inside out are really is a big vision. And um, so what we wanted to do was to take you through some experiences that we've had in adapting our approach, both with families and then into schools. So Every Family Matters, uh, what drew me to that is the fact that the fo real focus is the crucial relationship between a parent and a child. Because if a child is going to achieve their full potential, they need to feel they have a sense of belonging. I think we'll all agree about this. The sense of belonging, of being loved and being supported in what they want to do. And we know that you know, families are really are feeling the strain at the moment. We've got the financial crisis, we've got unemployment, redundancies. We've got the impact of a sexualised culture. We've got ease of access to the internet. And there is, a, there is a, an outcome of that, which is an increase in separation, divorce, fragmentation, isolation. And that's just the way it is. We know that. We can see it emerging. And uh, just to give you a statistic, 40% of children experience a breakdown in family. And um, almost half experienced that before the age of three. So we have a lot of kind of single mothers with young children. We have a lot of fragmented families and often they're isolated as well. And that's what we're dealing with. You know, the trauma and the psychological impact is having an adverse effect on our children. Um, it's manifests itself in, I mean, every Family Matters Institute gave a report in, the, in 2000 saying that um, it does affect health and behavior of the children. They are more likely to commit suicide. And in fact, I've had, within a year in my local community, we've had two young teenagers commit suicide. And I think you'll find if you look out there, it, it is sort of on the increase. Mm. Um, they also said that they're more likely to be prone to drug abuse, to <coughs> get involved in crime. And I know it does affect their performance in schools. Um, and, and the other statistic is they're more likely to be involved in divorce themselves when they get into adulthood. So we have to really look at this and kind of think, what are we going to do about this? How have we got to this point? Um, and one of the things that, as I said, is that depression amongst young people is actually shockingly high and increasing. Um, UNICEF in 2007 brought out a league, league table, world league table, and the UK was bottom in our child welfare, well-being. And I, you know, I just think that's shocking. And um, the Prince's Trust in 2009 brought out a report. They interviewed children, uh, young adults, 16 to 25, one in 10, so they felt their life was meaningless. Uh, 40, no, 27% said that they often felt down or depressed. And almost half, I think it was about 47%, said that you know, there was some point when they felt stressed, you know, often felt stressed. Now, to me, <laughs> it's absolutely appalling. And somebody who's very passionate about young people and very passionate about how we can achieve how they can achieve their full potential. You can see kind of where I'm going in terms of reaching out to coaching as a way of dealing with that. So that's the kind of um, state of mind of children. The other thing I'm very passionate about is education, of course. And I have to tell you that um, I've been in education for 27 years. And when I started, I always wanted to be Secretary of State for Education and just change it. <laughs> um, but I, came, I got as far as head of department, and then I had a terrible car accident, and that completely wiped my career. And that was fantastic for two reasons, because we always attract the things that we need. Um, one was I, had, I kind of turned to NLP to help me deal with that, my own personal crisis. And also, I also ended up heading into special needs education. I'd always been in mainstream, in comprehensives, and I also went into sixth form. But I was kind of drawn, I think it's because a friend of mine was a head teacher, and he said, come and work with me. So I did. And it was fantastic, because I just realised that... This thing that had been in the back of my mind all these years, that there, is, there are barriers to children's learning, and it's not just about a special need. It's about their state of mind. It's about their emotional state. It's about their happiness. If they're not happy, they're not going to learn. And I had that in the back of my mind. And I also had this other thing about parents as well. Because you know that thing on parents' evening, the very parents you want, want to come in, don't come in. 
And then there's also those moments in parents' evening where you talk to a parent and you find something out and you think, oh my God, that's why they're like that or like that. And it's like, chung, you know, you want to know more about their, lo- their home life because it just really helps you in finding a way for them to find out how they can achieve um, learning in the way that suits them. So I have these two things. And learning about NLP um, myself... I suddenly thought, this is it. This is the framework I need in the classroom. This is what I can use as a language for mindset in the classroom. So I I then went on an NLP, of course. So I'm now um, a master practitioner in NLP and a spiritual master practitioner as well because I'm interested in the energetic connection as well. And that's led me to Alan. So what I liked about Alan's work was the fact it was children and parents. Again, another kind of light bulb moment this is it. And I worked with Alan for a year, co-facilitating his courses, so um, until I was kind of qualified, I suppose, as a parent coach. And of course, I wanted to take it back into the school where I work. I'm a deputy head teacher of a small parent-owned um, special a school for children with disabilities and special needs. And in fact, I've seen us grown from four students to 27 students in the last six years. And again, that's a reflection of what's happening out there and that we are kind of taking in children that don't fit in the mainstream. They kind of, they're okay at primary school level, but then the trauma of moving to a bigger school where they probably had bad experience anyway at primary school, they sort of come to us. And we're now getting um, local authorities knocking on our door asking for us to take in children. And we are having um, a success because we're able to create our own adapted curriculum and um, we're able to work on the mindset of children very closely on a one-to-one basis. And we're ha- having extraordinary stories. But there isn't time to talk about that now because um, that's another thing. So that is the kind of context. But the bigger picture, and I suppose the reason why I'm at the school I'm at, is because I have an opportunity to adapt the curriculum, to change how I think education should go in, in really achieving the full potential of our students. And although I work in special needs... I feel it's very, I feel it's very um, important for all children. And I, I would include in this, more so particularly, um, independent schools, children of affluent parents as well. You know, it's not just about the special needs, it's about the whole kind of spectrum. So I've been doing, I mean, I do a lot of reading about, you know, how we want to change education, and that's why I'm kind of drawn to John. You know, we've got to change education hugely. And one of the per- people that I kind of read a lot, um, this is Sir Ken Robinson. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's written the book Out of Our Minds, which I thoroughly recommend. It's kind of re-looking at education, saying it doesn't need reforming. It just needs transforming. It is not, it is not serving our young people. Um, all the things I said earlier, it's not serving them. They're not coming out able to cope. I mean, uh, business people complain that our young people are not to cope with the skills. It's not that they can't read and write, it's that they just cannot cope with all the, all the demands made of them in terms of team building and getting on with people and emotional resilience. So um, that's kind of where we're at. He's, so Ken asks us to be more creative, to think differently about ourselves and to think differently about the way we work with other people. He also says that we should think about what it is, what it means, what intelligence means, and that we should just kind of break with this academic illusion. You know, it drives me mad, learning, um, teaching to tests. You know, I just kind of hate it. So, and it's just not good for our students. So um, he asks us to open our minds and say, um, in terms of education, in terms of embracing all the intelligences, using the right side of our brain, as valued and as utilised as our left scientific logic um, brain. And that's what we need to do. Now, we would agree wholeheartedly with that, of course, and certainly I do, but we want to say, actually, emotional intelligence should be in there as well, because all our work is rooted in emotional intelligence. And that is what is going to serve our young people when they leave schools as much as being able to read and write. So that's the kind of education thing, and, and it's not the place for me to say about how we've adopted, adapted our curriculum, um, but you can kind of imagine that we, we teach competencies rather than discrete subjects as much as we can. And I can talk about that in coffee later, but um, what I'd like to talk about is how 
why I've brought in the parent coaching, as I said earlier, we've got the mind state of young people and we've got this kind of educational curriculum that we can adapt to what we need to do. So I just thought bringing parent coaching in um, was the next stage. It's about creating a culture of coaching in the school. Now, um, when you bring um, transformative coaching into a business, the operation and the culture changes, the personal relationships changes, and it increases profitability. So education was bound to look at that and bring it into the schools and see how coaching could work in a school. But from what I can gather, and I've taken part in lots of kind of um, uh, workshops in this, uh, it's all about management and teacher performance in the classroom. It's about academic performance. And that's fine. That's fantastic. We've got better teaching. We've got, um, we've got uh, pupils who are becoming coaches themselves. We've got counselling being brought into school. We've got teachers learning counselling skills. Um, but we wanted to... Our focus is the relationship between the parent and the child. And also, because they spend six hours a day in the school, we need to bring the teacher into that triangle relationship. And school is about a partnership, um, engaging parents. Because what I find is that all the work you do in the classroom, if that child goes home, comes back the next day, and, of course, they, you know, what we've done in the classroom is still there. But it's, wouldn't it be fantastic if we all had the aligned mindset teachers, parents and children, all creating an environment that we call ethos of empowerment with responsibility, where we've all got the same mindset. But unless you, you can't do that unless you engage the parents in that and they know what we're talking about. So, what we decided to do is, uh, I went on the parent, coach, uh, parent champion courses, thought this was fantastic. I had to kind of get the, get the kind of organisation ready to introduce it. And in the summer before introducing it into the following January, um, a group of teachers, it was fantastic, we all went on NLP weekend, had about eight teachers from the school, just an introduction to NLP, just so they knew where I was kind of coming from and sort of things I was saying. And then with the parents, I set up a parent teaching forum so that we kind of came together. The parents in the school realised that we wanted to build a relationship. And one of the things they said was they'd like to do more workshops. And I said, well, I've got this workshop that you might like to be interested in. And in fact, out of 22 students, uh, parents that we had at that time, um, 19 signed up just you know, straight away. I was kind of amazed, actually. But it kind of told me that actually parents do want help. They do want support. They do want to come together and share experiences. Now, maybe because uh, I'm in a special needs school, that is slightly heightened because a lot of our parents are very worn down by the system, almost at their wits' end by the time they come to us, preparing for tribunes, and they've, you know, they've had a real history of a fight. And um, so that might be slightly heightened, but I think from what we've had with the response with the courses anyway, that you know, people do generally want help. But I also had to explain that it wasn't a parenting skills course, that this was about personal development. So I did, a, I did explain that, and they kind of knew that, uh, had that understanding. And out of the 19 that signed up, um, 16 sort of dipped in and out, but 12 actually completed the whole course and we gave them a certificate at the end, which was fantastic, fantastic turnout. Um, at the same time, because I teach in the school, um, I also delivered through PSHE, because I teach PSHE as well, which is Personal Social Health and Education, um, I delivered the same sessions <coughs> called Young Champion. They, was the, they were the same sessions, really, that we did with the Parent Champion. I have to say now that I'm kind of redoing them and I'm adapting them now. Um, I kind of worked out what worked and what didn't work, and I'm kind of redoing them at the moment and trialling them again. And I've kind of added things in, like Happy Feet and, you know, little kind of films. And somebody said that... that was your partner that said... Um, You've got to do other activities. You've got to engage the students in different ways. So I'm just experimenting with that at the moment. And we even used um, Eminem's songs to kind of um, relate to the young people as well. And they've been really successful. So I can talk about, again, that in more detail another time. Um, these are just some of the testimonials. Now, one of the ladies in the film, um, she's kind of got the blonde hair with the glasses. She's one of our parents. Uh, she's one of the parents that took our course uh, at the school, and these are some of the things that um, I'll just let you read those. What you may have noticed is, is unique.
perhaps to this, um, to a whole kind of approach, is it's not just the parents that were in the sessions. It was also teachers. I was obviously there because I was co-facilitating or facilitating. We were doing it together, weren't we? Um, but I also managed to persuade four other, three other teachers to take part. And out of the four of us, two actually did eventually drop out. Uh, but one teacher did stay in. She was actually a class assistant, but she's training to be a teacher. And at the time, she was just coming to complete her degree so that she could then move on to teach training, which she's doing now in the school. And she decided this was so powerful that she wanted to do her dissertation for her degree on our parent coaching course. And she really studied the outcomes because she had a profound effect on herself and has changed the whole way she deals with her children and her family. And, you know, she's, doing, um, she's actually now an outstanding teacher on her doing her um, teacher training at the moment. So she said this. This is her. Actually, the second quotation is me, <laughs> I just realised. Um, <laughs> deepening of our vote, it really was. And that is what, that's why having the teachers in the room, um, it was a real challenge. And you can imagine, can't you, having teachers and parents talking about their own personal issues together in a room. And we, we argued this, didn't we, Alan? That, uh, um, I think Alan's opinion was that we shouldn't, it couldn't happen because it would just um, undermine the authority of the teacher, and the teacher would feel very vulnerable. And I said, well, that's good. Let's have it. Let's have more vulnerability. Let's have more honest, open, trusting relationships, because we know that works in businesses when we transform it. And that's what we need in schools. You know, it, we do need to just be fallible people where we can just open up to each other. And I have to say, there is a deepening of my relationship with, the with these parents, we do smile at each other because <laughs> we've shared, and it's so powerful. I thought it would be, be a good idea, but actually it's quite a brilliant idea to say it afterwards, um, because it's just moved me up to another level in terms of being a deputy head teacher, having a relationship with the parents that I work with and the other teachers. Sandra and I, uh, no, the other teacher, we are so close because we've been in this room together sharing a personal journey and it's been amazing. Now, uh, I just quickly say that when I've approached another school and suggested this, the head teacher, he did kind of muse about it, but then thought he suddenly had two or three teachers he thought would, would do that, which is fantastic. So I think there are teachers out there who would be willing to do it and at least have a go and try. And, you know, if it becomes too personal, they drop out. But that happens with our parents as well. You know, there are certain issues that you'll discuss and there are certain ones that will frighten you away. So this is a new idea in schools. It is, it is a challenging one, but I also think it's an innovative one, and I think if we want to move our society forward, we need to develop this triangle of trust between parent, pupil, teacher, and just kind of build the culture of um, coaching up through the school that way, and not just at the performance classroom level. first one shows how the parent running alongside the pupil um, journeys, how that's worked. So they both kind of realising that, you know, his mum was doing this parent coaching course and he was doing the course in my class and how that was coming together in that one. The second one was a boy that um, has now left our school and completely, you know, transformed. And he is, uh, when he came to us, had, wasn't going to do any GCSEs, had no idea of what he was going to do, and he left us with... Uh, three or four, just as he's now at college, and he's emailing me to say, I've just got to see my English. And um, he's, you know, he's just kind of zoomed along on that. And so that's him there. OK, now with my um, education hat on and in trying to kind of persuade schools that this is a good idea, leadership for parental engagement is, a, is an important document that's come out. And Ofsted have now put parental engagement as one of the key things in an in a Ofsted inspection. So this is a way to encourage parental engagement. You know, um, it's 
I think they kind of see it as giving out more leaflets, communicating more, being more open parents, um, parent evenings and all that sort of thing. I'm saying, no, come on, let's do more than that. Let's actually build a triangle of trust using coaching and building a whole coaching culture um, you, with involving parents as well. They are there in the equation. And really that's our vision then, sort of together education and parent champion courses, so together to influence the way the next generation think about what it is to be a good parent and citizen. <laughs>